Irish guy and the Prem catch-up is back. I mean, how did everyone enjoy their weekend? Um, if you actually watch the Eurovision, then, um, get out. Go on, just, just, just get out. Go on. We'll all wait. But lads, the Premier League results from the weekend were mostly insane. So yeah, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you. Yes, you behind the screen. I know you're not from around here. We haven't seen you here before. I don't recognize you, so go on, hit that subscribe button. You absolute legend. Right, let's go. Arsenal nil, Brighton three. Jacob Kivor is a wimp. That, that's all there is to say. Coming through the underleg. This fella was supposed to be the Polish Vincent Company. No, 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 no. That's like comparing Mike Tyson to Logan Paul. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure KSI elbowing is made in the face. Proves that YouTube boxing is about as credible as the feelings of a scarecrow. But lads, when Arsenal signed this bloke from Spezia, he was described as a defensive soldier. Soldier! I mean, how many soldiers do you know collapsed to the floor because someone stepped on their shoe? I can think of one. The ones in Toy Story. This was a game where Arsenal needed to win. And yet, with the scores at nil-nil, Evan Ferguson accidentally treads on his foot and Kiwa crumbles to the floor like a bag of flour. I mean, sure he had Micah Richards defending him in the post-match on that assist, but maybe that's because Richards looks like the type of molly coddled modern footballer who wouldn't be able to sleep at night if he's not wearing silk pajamas. I mean, the ball is in your six-yard box. It's up for grabs. And you actually choose to lie on the floor. Floor. I don't care if Kivor has a bone sticking out of his foot, looking like a B-Tech Wolverine. I don't care if his knee is being bitten by a snake, you still throw yourself at that football. But he doesn't. He's on the floor, complaining because half of his shoe fell off his foot. Listen, this match, it must have hurt. Arsenal fans have been hoping all season long that they would win the league, and then it gets absolutely shot up by losing 3-0 at home to Brighton and Hove Albion. Lads, forget the narrative that Arsenal bottled the league. If anyone actually wants to criticise this Arsenal team for finishing second in the Premier League, then you're probably also the same type of person who's got a potato waffle for a brain. This is like when Liverpool finished second under Brendan Rodgers, and everybody laughed at them as if they were English football's biggest joke. Just conveniently forgetting that the previous season, Rodgers began the season with two points from a possible 15. They'd only scored 10 goals at Anfield by Christmas. Tell anyone that they would finish second within 18 months. They would look at you as if you just confessed to getting your sister pregnant. So I don't want to hear slander on Arsenal. They have been amazing this season. And similarly, Brighton and Roberto Zerbi are class. Can we please just accept now that Potter is a thing of the past? Considering he's actually been outperformed by Zerbi? Can we accept that Potter really was just a Garrett Southgate with a Swedish passport? Zerbi is the real deal while Potter about as attractive as broccoli pie. But lads, Again, I don't want the world to laugh at Arsenal fans because it's been a great season for them. But I do want you to laugh at one Arsenal fan. His name is Fitz. He's been saying every single day of the year that Arsenal are going to win the league. So, um, sorry, Paddy. I know that's, that's, that's not me being stirred. His name is actually Paddy. Everybody write in the comments, cry more Fitz. Honestly, lads, he deserves it, okay? That's all I want to see in the comments, okay? I don't want to hear you mocking Arsenal. Just write those three words. Cry more fits. Chelsea 2, Nottingham Forest 2. So, it's official. Unless Chelsea win the Eddie had this weekend, which, I mean, let's be honest, there is more chance of me morphing into a witch. Well then, Chelsea will 100% finish in the bottom half of the Premier League, which will be even more embarrassing than if Todd Bowley admitted to the world that he fancies the fat bloke of Borat. Lads, Chelsea are a team who lifted to the Champions League two years ago, so those same season ticket holders who pile into Stamford Bridge every other week, it must be a bit like Paris Hilton's dad paying to go watch her films. Uh, yeah, within 20 minutes of sitting through House of Wax. He probably felt like blooding himself with popcorn. At halftime, Chelsea were losing at home to Forest. Bear in mind, this is a group of already been beaten at Stamford Bridge seven times this season. I mean, remember the days when Josie were in 86 consecutive league games at Stamford Bridge without defeat? And now this season, they're letting the likes of Southampton, Brentford, and Brighton leave with a win. This season, Chelsea are an embarrassing mess, which might as well come with an annoying laugh track. They're the Premier League's answer to the Big Bang Theory. These Chelsea fans haven't actually seen a Premier League win at this ground in two Two and a half months. And even that was just an ugly 1-0 win over Leeds. And even then, you have to go back another two months to find a 1-0 win versus Crystal Palace. Lad, since the 8th of October, over the last seven months, those Chelsea fans have seen home wins over Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Leeds, and that's it. The Blues have only won five league games at home inside the last year. I'm sorry, but that is a disgrace. Chelsea have the money to blow teams out of the water, but they've only won a Premier League match at home by more than two goals once 
since October 2021. One night you smashed Norwich by seven. Since then, there's been one 3 0 win over Wolves, two 0 wins over Tottenham and Bournemouth, and then there's just seven scrappy wins by just one goal. And this is entertainment for the Chelsea fans. It's probably about as entertaining as letting a panda bear eat their face. But listen, this was a brilliant point for Forrest. Yes, Raheem starting scored twice, but so did Taiwo Awaniyi. A Liverpool reject who, I'll admit it, for most of the season, I just thought he was a muscular brick who actually had the goal scoring skill of a teapot made of poo. But to be fair, he has come alive in the last third of the season and this was a huge result. I'm guessing Steve Cooper probably danced all the way home before celebrating with a pie and even a kiss from his wife. I mean, I'm guessing his previous kiss was in 2012. I mean, uh, sorry Steve, but he looks like someone drove over his face with a car. Crystal Palace 2, Bournemouth 0. Abrecki Enzi is a monster. I'll be honest, I was prepared for this ex-QPR star to have returned from his long injury layoff looking about as useful as a broken tap. Because the story wrote itself, right? This guy was included in the senior English squad before Euro 2020, and then he gets injured and gets replaced in the Palace team by Michael Olise. And now Eze, a guy who was passed around football academies as if he was a foster child who thinks of we, surely he would return as an underconfident shell who would fail to get back into the Palace team and would instead just be sold to Coventry. But no, since returning from his injury, he's been better than ever. Two more goals here against Bournemouth, taking his tally to 10 for the season. And I'm gonna say this. Arsenal had him on their books from the ages of 8 to 13. Choosing to then stuff him in a garbage bin before he even growing hair on his armpits, does anyone else think that that decision has aged about as well as the CGI in Harry Potter? I'm gonna say it. Throwing Eze in a dumpster and persisting with Emil Smith Rowe oofed. I think we should find out which person was responsible for destroying Eze's teenage dream and maybe the club should feed his contract to a dog. Uh, did I just say teenage dream? Price of all, I sound like some teenage brat singing along at a Katy Perry concert. Yeah, I would rather eat every page of a magazine than go to a Katy Perry concert. But Bournemouth have stayed up. I mean, what? Bournemouth have actually survived in this division. Trying to wrap your head around that. It's been like trying to work out how the bloke in the wheelchair survived all seasons of The Walking Dead. Okay, I don't know if that's true. I've never seen a single episode of that show. And yes, okay, I know because Bournemouth have stayed up. I know. This week, I'm going to have to eat shepherd's pie off the bottom of a stranger's car. Oh, oh hooray! Man United 2 Wolves nil. Okay, who or what is Daniel Bentley? Last season, Wolves Portuguese goalie Jose Sá was practically a shoe in for team of the year. Yeah, fast forward 12 months and Julian Lopetegui has led on the bench Sá for a trip to Old Trafford and instead give Daniel Bentley a goal between the sticks. I will hold my hands up. I was about as clued in to the career of Daniel Bentley as I am clued in to whatever happens on Holly Yokes. I mean, for all I know, that show could now be about the townspeople of Chester trying to fight off dragons with a spoon whilst the main character has to wrestle a bear. But Bentley, in he comes to make his Premier League debut at 29 and he was fantastic. Manchester United had 27 efforts on goal. Nine were on target and they only scored two. Anthony Martial tapped in after 32 minutes before Alejandro Garnacho sunk one in off the post in the final seconds before showing off his chest tattoo. Who gets a chest tattoo at 19? The guy probably thinks he's Conor McGregor. No. He's more like Jack Mace. But lads, in between those two goals, Bentley. It was like he was possessed by the ghost of Iker Casillas. I mean, everyone was impressed. Even Jose Sa. What a game! No, <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Sa. But does anyone else think that he wrote this Instagram message whilst his fingers were quaking with rage? This comment must have been through gritted teeth. A bit like when you ask your grandma if she needs her nappy changed. I mean, you're trying to be polite as you can be as you're both sharing cookies and tea. But oh, you are praying to Lucifer that she says no. I mean, come on. Sa was basically outshone by a bloke who spent eight years at South Hens. He's a former Braintree Town number one. This fella spent his childhood playing as a centre back. He is an Arsenal reject goalie who's nearly 30 years of age. And yet this performance might have just cancelled Sa's career. Everton nil Man City 3. Man City fans must love Everton. They must. Because this is a club who now are pretty much associated with Man City winning the league. Because Everton were the ones who snatched a 4-4 draw at Old Trafford in April 2012 to open the door to City to win their first Premier League. I mean, in May 2014, Liverpool fans were praying for Everton to beat Man City at Goodison Park. And they didn't. Man City came from 1-0 down to win 3-2. I mean, four years ago, the last points dropped by Liverpool in their 97-point season was, yeah, a 0-0 draw at Goodison Park, which cost them the league. 
In May 2021, Man City lifted the Premier League title after a 5-0 win over Everton, who were weirdly coached by Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, did anyone think that in just 12 months, this poor bewildered old man would be lifting the Champions League? Man City fans must love Everton, which is weird because they used to be their bogey team. From September 2004 to March 2013, Everton beat Man City 12 times. For a while there, the Man City owners were probably terrified of David Moyes, but now, I mean, a bit like someone who confront their phobia by instead choosing to let spiders sleep on their face. Now, Man City have gone over their Everton fear because they haven't lost to them in six years. I mean, this was 11 wins in 12, and yet two goals from Ilkay and Dogen, one from Erling Haaland. A brilliant win for Man City, yes, but if I'm an Everton fan, I'm a bit depressed because the maximum points they can take from this season is 38, which will be their lowest points total since 1981, and that's if they win both of their next two games. This will be the second season in a row where Everton have failed to hit 40 points. It'll also be the third season in a row where Sean Dyche has failed to hit 40 points. Because don't forget, in 2021, he only kept Burnley in the league by the width of a camel's pubic hair, 39 points. Lads, Sean Dyche is not the future. He is very much a thing of the past. To look at him, he's about as exciting as a hamster's crotch. Do you really think if Everton stay in this league that these same fans are going to be putting up with him next season? How ugly do you think it's going to look when Burnley, Dyche's former dynasty or club are dominating possession stats and winning games 4-0. Burnley under company are very quickly going to make Dyche look about as talented as microwave mud. My prediction. Everton have made a habit out of hiring ex-Chelsea managers. So again, by Christmas, good as a bark, is going to have Graham Potter at the wheel. I mean, they already made an informal approach to Brighton for him two years ago, and Potter probably now has the self-esteem of an incel who sleeps with his dead mum. So yeah, this makes sense. Potter will be at Everton by the end of the year. And poor old Dyche will never work in the Premier League ever again. Leeds to Newcastle 2. That. This is a monumental occasion. Something really weird is happening in my bones. I'm gonna say this. For the first time in about 80 weeks, I actually think Leeds United are staying in the Premier League. Lads, ever since Marcelo Bielsa was binned off early last year, I've been convinced that Leeds United were getting relegated. I have thought this every single week of Jesse Marsh's reign, every single week of Javi Garcia's reign, and the first week of Big Sam's reign. But now... I'm changing my mind. Allardyce has actually managed to galvanize this Leeds team. I know they've conceded three penalties in two games. And actually, they were millimeters away from conceding a fourth in the last minute here. Well, I mean, this is a team who were recently shipping five at home to Crystal Palace. A Palace team who at the time were famous for being unable to score a goal. Can you imagine how harsh Allardyce would have been on his defense in training every day this week? The guy was probably putting out every trick in the book, threatening to stuff Luke Ayling's hamster in the oven, telling Junior Furpro that if he doesn't put his finger out, he'll order a Yorkshire gangster to break both his arms. I mean, poor old Ilan Melier has been thrown out the window. Five minutes ago, he's been hailed as a future France number one. Now, he just looks like a depressed 23-year-old who's probably too shy to even look Big Sam in the eye. Honestly, Allardyce would probably sooner stick this bloke in a sandwich than he would trust him between the sticks. Because, yeah, over the last 18 months, he's been shakier than an Eskimo with diarrhea. But I actually think that Leeds are staying in this league because this version of it battling Leeds United. I fancy them to grind out a result at West Ham, maybe squeak a 1-1 draw before, yeah, absolutely. This version of a warrior team under Allardyce playing against a demoralized Tottenham team on the beach at home at a passionate Ellen Road Spurs have no chance Big Sam pitting his wits against Ryan Mason someone who probably still needs to bring his ID to the pub without a shadow of a doubt I now fancy Leeds United I think they'll end the season on 35 points and I will just about be enough to keep them in the league just about I think right now the teams that are going down are Southampton, Leicester, and Nottingham Forest. But lads, here is a stat about this match that will probably cause both sets of fans to nervously wee on the floor. The last time these two clubs played out a 2-2 draw at Ellen Road, Leeds ended the season 19th in the league while Newcastle wound up 5th. Yeah, I mean, if history were to repeat itself this month, oh, both clubs would hate that. But finally, Callum Wilson has scored 17 goals in a Premier League season. Nobody has done that in a Newcastle shirt since Alan Shearer in 2004. This was supposed to be the season where Wilson was finished. An injury-prone lump. Old news and replaced by that shiny new toy from Spain. Yeah, Wilson has only completed 19 minutes in the league twice all season long. He's only started 18 Premier League games and he's got 17 goals. Put some respect on Callum Wilson's name. Southampton nil, Fulham 2. Southampton are a disgrace. I'm sorry, but they are. The owners who run that club hang your head in shame. For the last few years, Southampton have been a dreary, ugly, unambitious chunk of the Premier League. But for a while there, they were one of the most exciting teams in the league. When they were promoted in 2012, they finished 14th, 8th, 7th, 6th, and 8th again. To show their decline. I mean, the coaches they had win other managers the likes of PSG, Barcelona, Chelsea, 
and Bradford City. Do you see the drop off? Lads, the show their huge decline. Yes, in 2019, they lost their Premier League game of football 9 0 at home. But don't forget, just five years before that, that same stadium was seeing an 8 0 win when Sadio Mane ripped the Sunderland defence into a coma. Lads, imagine a Southampton 11 over the last 10 years. Bazunu, Clive, Van Dyke, Alder Bible, Shaw, Hoiberg, Schneider, and Ward Prowse, Manny, Ings, and Tadic. What happened? Honestly, what has happened? It was only six years ago these Southampton fans were watching their team beat Inter Milan in the Europa League. Now, Inter are going to reach the final of the Champions League, while Southampton are finishing bottom of the league. It's a disgrace. The decisions this club has made, and I don't even just mean with hiring managers with a footballing IQ of turnip soup. Honestly, how did Nathan Jones ever pass a job interview? He's got the charisma of Moldy Weed of Bix. But only two years ago, they sold Ings for £20 million and replaced him with an unproven Blackburn cheesecake like Adam Armstrong. These are just a few examples of how the club has been terribly run, and I'm seven. Whoever makes the decisions at Southampton Football Club, you've just ruined Southampton Football Club. Well done. As of the two, Tottenham one. Tottenham are seventh. Tottenham are seventh in the league. Oh, lads, I cannot wait to react to my Premier League predictions because I was the only person on planet Earth or even planet Mars who said that Tottenham would finish seventh. I think we can all agree that now there's more chance of an alien climbing out of my nose than there is of Tottenham finishing inside the top six. Lads, Spurs are brutal. Here they were traveling to Aston Villa and pretty comfortably losing 2-1. Well, I mean, what do you expect of Ryan Mason? Someone whose mum probably still combs his hair when he's trying to tackle out with Unai Emery. A man with five Europa Leagues on his CV. I'd be like a world where Magnus Carlsen is taking on Stevie Wonder in a game of chess. Yeah, poor old Stevie would probably accidentally eat the queen. Brentford 2, West Ham nil. Again, a pretty comfy end of season match which no one's gonna remember. Neither club are in any real danger of going down. Not really. I mean, definitely not Brentford. They're still hanging on to hopes of Europe. But yeah, again, a pretty nothing match. Uh. Anyway, that's the end of it. Let me know in the comments what did you think of the Premier League results this weekend. Let me know who do you think is going down. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, share, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.